how how would I how would I make this uh, how do I the, the, pre Preset? the presentation? Yeah, okay. screenshot. Okay. Yes. Uh, put your cursor in the left of the screen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that uh, yeah. the first one chat that you can see here on the uh, on the right, and the green one is yeah. screen share. Did you find it? Yes, I did. Okay. Cool. Perfect. All right. So you can see my screen, right? Not yet. You have to allow. All right. Um, just a moment. Okay. I think we can continue while I figure this out. I think in a way it is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Today is. Mm -hmm. Okay, Anders, uh, please um, introduce Myself. yourself. Yes, and okay. others. Uh, no, the others I, I don't. They could introduce themselves. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, my name is Anders, and I'm from Sweden. Oh, um, oh that's. Something happened there. Uh, and I'm an ICT advisor in school. Uh, in the age of retirement, but I don't like to retire. So I, I, I'm, I'm so fond of the passion with all the people. And uh, I love uh, scratching with the kids in school. So that's my, my little passion. So. That's me. The next one, Roberto, he, he couldn't speak. Yes, yes, I can speak just, uh, just a very, uh, just a little. Yes. And I am a high school teacher and I teach robotics in a, um, in a robot for uh, primary school um, uh, boys. And girls, and also middle school. Very happy to join this group, and I, uh, I just want to learn as much as possible and share my ideas and experiences with you all. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Adel Kassar Thank from you. Tunisia, and I'm computer science teacher in middle school, and I do uh, clubs with the uh, association around Tunisia and conferences and sometimes I develop my own tool about uh, programming. Uh, now I'm uh, working uh, around uh, the Internet of Things concept and uh, I'm teaching this in uh, Tunisia in uh, middle school and also uh, with association. And I am Simon. I'll be presenting uh, to you guys about my project but I come from Tanzania and I run an like I manage an organization called She Codes for Change, and we empower girls and young women uh, using uh, to take part in STEM. And we run uh, boot camps, we run uh, trainings for young girls from 12, and also the university girls who are in who are age like 20 to 20 to 30, 30 years old. Yeah. Okay, just just to, to know a little bit more from each other here. Uh, uh, Simon, uh, Anders, Roberto and I, we first met in 2013 for the LCL, the first learning k to learn course. We are been together since then. And after for this uh, Scratch Online course, computing, creative, creative computing course, and we all together and then we met Adele and we've been together participating interacting sharing projects ideas and helping each other since then as many of others so we are welcoming you a new boy a new generation we met 
the three of us met Simon uh, at Bordeaux conference, the Scratch conference, Roberto. Mm -hmm. And there was uh, a special presentation for <laughs> people from Africa. And uh, maybe uh, you could turn off your, okay. And so we are very uh, happy uh, for having Simon here with us with these new ideas and a lot of things to do for his country and people in general. So welcome, Simon. I'm very happy to be here too. And yes, we met, we met in Bordeaux and I learned so much there. That was my second introduction to Scratch uh, because we've used it in our programs before to train girls in our boot camps to make games. Uh, but there, I learned so much about what Adele is using, what Heloisa is doing uh, with Scratch. And so, uh, actually, I, a few weeks ago, I reached out to Heloisa and said, we want to do something with Scratch uh, to help disabled children. And it's, it's amazing. I, I can't wait to share with you what, what we're doing. Um, should I pull up the presentation now? Or? Yes, yes. OK. Thank you. Um, Maybe if you could speak a little bit slowly because there is some echo from your microphone. I tried okay. to put a little bit down your voice and I think it worked a little bit. It's okay. some echo. Okay. Great. So, um, I will speak really slowly. <laughs> Just to introduce you to uh, the Tanzanian uh, education system, but also uh, to introduce you to She Calls for Change. So, uh, I'm sure most of you know where Tanzania is. So, uh, in Af we're in East Africa, and as you can see, we are on just, we are bordered by Kenya, we're bordered by Uganda, and we're next to the Indian Ocean. And so the capital city, which is Dar es Salaam, is really close to the is really close to, to the ocean, and just a few minutes walk to the beach. <laughs> um, so uh, Heloisa asked me to talk about the education system in Tanzania, um, and we have three uh, types of schools. Uh, we have the public schools, which are owned by the government. We have community schools which are initiated by the local uh, community uh, together with the local government uh, in, in, the, in the areas. And then we have the third type, which is the privately owned schools. Uh, these are started up by individuals, uh, who, and most of them are for profit. So Tanzania uses a two, seven, four, two, three sort of system whereby you have pre-primary education um, which happens for two years. And this one, the kids who take part in this one are between five to six years. Um, I think this is, this is like kindergarten um, or nursery school. And so here they just learn basics of counting and counting, mathematics, just to, to bring them up to speed before they begin primary school. And these, these are most, you'll find most of this education in the, in, the, in the towns, in the cities, where parents can afford to take their children to pre-primary school. Uh, so this is, this goes on for two years. Um, and then from there, they move to second, uh, primary school. Uh, primary school takes place for, for seven years. Um, so between seven years uh, to 13 years of age, boys and girls, are sent to primary school, which is primary one, primary two, primary three, primary four. And the mode of delivery in public schools is Kiswahili for this. So in here, they learn uh, mathematics, they learn civics, they learn science, they learn to speak English. Uh, but most of the lessons here are delivered in Kiswahili. Uh, after after this primary school, which goes on for seven years, they usually so they proceed now. They they do the um, second primary school leaving examination uh, called PSLE, 
And this one, so the government sets a uh, couple of points uh, for these examinations. And these are the ones that I use to evaluate uh, who goes to secondary school. And so for four years, uh, around the age of 14 to 17 years, girls and boys are then posted by the government to secondary schools to go and study, which is it's a, it's a higher level of uh, secondary school. Uh, and this one goes on for four years. Where, and here, it's, it's worth noting here, they begin, most, during this age, that's where most of, the, most of the girls begin thinking about their careers. So they choose here where, whether they want to study uh, arts and social studies, or they choose science subjects. And in most cases, like they would go for subjects like business, uh, they would go for maybe mathematics, they would do history and linguistics in here. And the mode of, now the funny thing with the Tanzania system is that the mode of delivery in secondary school changes and becomes English now. So they are required to study math in English, they are required to study um, all the subjects in English except Kiswahili. For, public, for private, um, private schools, uh, most private schools, they teach primary, they teach in English, secondary, they teach in English. It's, it's a little bit uh, managed there unlike in the in public schools. After secondary school, they would then go on to advanced levels, uh, which is, I think, most uh, out of Tanzania would be regarded to as high school. Um, and here, they would spend two years. And this is a, a little bit higher, so they would specialize even more. So if they chose, after secondary school, if they chose to do science subjects, then they would go to special schools where they teach uh, those science subjects. And here they have combinations. So uh, you, there are subjects you can study together in a combination. So you find you, you, if you choose history, you will study it together with economics, uh, geography, and maybe Kiswahili. Or if you choose physics, you will study it with chemistry, uh, biology, and then math. So uh, different schools offer different uh, combinations uh, for students and usually the age here is 18 to 19 years of age on a normal scale um, so that is uh, the advanced level and after the advanced level usually you advance now to go to university or uh, the tertiary uh, institution such as uh, we have vocational training institutions we have teacher uh, institutions uh, and and the university and here so if you if you manage to pass a certain cut of point then you can proceed those with higher credits they can proceed to university and the government handles uh, the posting of your students to university especially those who want to go on government scholarship uh, those who don't have higher points uh, can either go off to teaching institutions can go to vocational training institutions and just study diplomas <clears throat> and short courses uh, so that they can at least advance in their career. So also the education system of Tanzania is really, so usually for those who cannot afford, for example, after primary school to advance to secondary school, they would say go and begin working for their families or the girls, some of them would go get married and some challenges that are out there. The government is trying to provide free education, uh, but that is coming with its own costs uh, and problems because you find like the area, schools where they're giving uh, free education, there are no uh, enough teachers, the equipment is not enough, the classrooms are not, the environment for learning is not uh, conducive for the, for the students. So, Simon, uh, yes. I have a lot of questions, uh, something I didn't yes. understand, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, it's wonderful, this uh, big landscape you're showing us, it's totally mm -hmm. new pictures for me, I'm learning a lot, thank you so much. Yeah. And uh, just some few questions before you're going ahead, okay? Yes. Uh, you said that you have three possibilities, private, community, and pub, um, public schools. Yes. 
is this for the, just for pre -pri primary schools or also for uh, secondary or university? How is that? How is the proportional proportion of um, public yeah. schools or, <laughs> for instance, here in Brazil, uh, yeah. we have a lot of schools, but the but the, they are not good. The best are the private ones. And for university, it is opposite. The best ones are the public. Mm -hmm. So it's crazy. So how is it in Tanzania? Could you tell us, please? Yeah, so it's open here. And uh, when you go to pre-primary, when you go to primary, when you go into the secondary, and also the university, <laughs> you find all these three uh, categories there. Mostly the public, and the private. Uh, private. Private people are starting up nursery schools, they're starting up uh, primary schools, secondary schools. And also here, these privately owned second, uh, schools, they provide better education. They provide better education and then they provide better resources because uh, it's for profit. But also, they are almost the most expensive uh, schools to take your children to. For the government schools, they are those old schools that have been there for a long time. Those still are considered the best schools because uh, they have all the resources there, they have, and they've been in existence for a long time. So they have a reputation of uh, producing some of the best students in the country. Um, so that is for, for primary and secondary school and uh, pre-primary. Uh, in the universities, there are very few universities uh, the biggest, the big universities are owned by the government. We have University of Dar es Salaam, which is considered the best university um, in Tanzania. And I think it's really reputable uh, for law across Africa. We have also the University of Dodoma. Now, these are government-owned universities. There are also other universities, like the Open University and the Medical University, Mohibili which are all government owned and they are the best. We haven't had so many uh, private universities um, in Tanzania, there are very few. Um, and some of them are upcoming and they're not providing really good education. So I, I think in that case, it's almost similar to what is happening uh, in Brazil. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> and uh, so the government is, there are some initiatives, there are some initiatives that are being... Or let's go on, other guys? It's okay? Okay, let's go on. Yeah. So are, the, the government is putting in some initiatives like scholarships, uh, providing free education to like in the public, in the public sector. And it's helping to some extent. Uh, most of these public schools, which I think are taking most of the, uh, of the young uh, people of Tanzania and educating them, they are lacking in terms of resources, in terms of the quality of education. And so most of the initiatives that are coming up are geared towards empowering uh, these uh, students and people in the universities. So uh, She Code for Change is focused on girls. Uh, and so I, I talk, when I was talking about the secondary education, it's, I say that's where most of them are choosing uh, what kind of careers to take. Uh, but the girls especially uh, at all these different levels. So we have cultures here, some cultures uh, where these girls come from that put them second. So every time the parent is choosing to take uh, one of their children to school, it's usually the boys first. Uh, and if there are not really enough resources, they would say, okay, let's take the boy and not the girl, you know? <clears throat> it's changing to the better, but it's changing really slowly. And it's sad that some of these cultures really exist, you know? And so at all these levels, you find that girls, uh, like they have decisions to make, like either to get married, uh, pregnancies, they have, maybe the resources are not enough. And all of these affect girls greatly, you know? Um, and so you can see there, like, the girls, the, the, some of the parents are like, yeah, it's not a nice thing to take girls to school. Or if they fail, they're like, yeah, we told you girls are not supposed to go to school and stuff like that. Um, 
So that's where Chico for Change uh, comes in. Um, so we've been in existence since 2015. We started as a project, um, but now we are registered as a for-profit organization uh, running as a social enterprise. Um, and we offer a lot of activities with the main focus to girls. Uh, but also, we are inclusive organization. So we also try to see how boys and men contribute towards STEM and towards women participation in STEM, but also see how we don't just create a future where it's many girls participating and then we forget the boys. So, you, and you can ask any question, you can just jump in and ask a question uh, when I'm giving this uh, presentation. Uh, so, Shiko for Change, our, our biggest goal is to, I mean, our biggest, our mission, so we, we, uh, is to expose more girls uh, to STEM. So, you can see here, STEM is a new concept in Tanzania, uh, and we are trying to see that girls, because it's fun, it's really interesting, so we're trying to use that approach to expose more girls to careers uh, and subjects, uh, STEM subjects and STEM careers, but also to see that their works, their innovations, their ideas are showcased to the public. Um, and through this, uh, we, we do this through uh, boot camps, when we, whenever we have boot camps, uh, our social media, we showcase what the, the projects the girls are working on, we usually also invite their parents to come and see um, what the girls are doing. Um, and to do this, we have five areas of focus where uh, most of our activities evolve. Um, and the first one is the sparking of girls' interest. And this one happens uh, for girls for in primary and secondary school. Um, so these are the young generation. Um, and we don't want, in, our activi in these activities that are aimed to spark their interest, we are not aiming to make them professionals. Uh, we're just aiming to make them see that they can also participate in STEM, uh, make them see that their ideas could be implemented uh, using STEM, uh, but also make them curious about technology and what they can do with technology. And some of the projects we are doing here, uh, the Girls in ICT project, uh, together with that we do together with the government um, and also the communication fund of Tanzania and this project uh, we travel around Tanzania we send trainers around Tanzania and they train girls from secondary school and these girls uh, I told you secondary school is four years so most of these girls are trained that, that are trained here are from the third year of secondary school because the third year that's when they have to choose what subjects they want to study so those who want to study arts will choose art subjects. Those who want to study sciences will choose science subjects. And so we want to get them at this point where they are deciding about their career. Um, and so in these activities, we do mobile application development using the MIT uh, App Inventor tool. Uh, we do game development using Scratch. Um, we do, uh, and next year we are planning to do, actually after Bodu we met, uh, uh, Susan from the US, um, who is doing tattoo stitch. Uh, and so we want to introduce them to coding patterns with, with tattoo stitch, uh, but also robotics and mechatronics. So this is, this is the girls, uh, this is the sparking of interest uh, focus that we have. And so far, we've done, you can see on our social media, we've done a lot of activities with these young girls. And we hope to keep doing it for as long as we exist. Um, the second focus is sustaining the engagement. Uh, because one of the things we've noticed is that whenever we go to these schools, whenever we do these boot camps for the young girls, after they, they leave the boot camps and they go back to their schools, it's really hard for them to keep up, to keep practicing, because either they don't have the computers in the schools or the teachers that they have don't know how to teach STEM. And so uh, the other thing we do is holiday programs, which fall under sustaining. Uh, so we do uh, summer, summer camps in July. Holy, so uh, in July and December, that's when they have the holidays. Um, so we do summer camps and holiday camps in this period. And then we bring them, but they come and attend for free um, in these boot camps. And then they learn and practice more. Uh, 
but also in sustaining here, we are trying to put up uh, a physical space where these girls can come and participate and also like just participate in STEM at the space because that's another big challenge that they face. They don't have spaces that are empowering and are encouraging them to use technology. And so uh, already we are working um, with Impact Hub Network uh, to bring it to Tanzania and then set up a physical space where these girls can come and participate. Uh, but also here, it's worth mentioning, we have a lot of uh, initiatives that we work with, with some of our part local partners here in Tanzania. That uh, So whenever they have the training, we go and offer digital literacy training. One of the new partners that are, we, we just started working with is called WeWorld. And they have centers and they have a, a rich in schools. And so what we do is we go there with our trainers and curricula and teach uh, these students who are, these girls and boys who are in these centers, how to use technology. Um, the other focus that we do is inspiring the women to take up STEM subjects and STEM careers. Um, so the other thing, because the, the Tanzanian system is still growing, it's, it doesn't have some, uh, some infrastructure in place uh, to empower and show women that they can become, say, engineers. Uh, one of the good stories that we had in the girls in ICT, uh, so in girls in ICT, we usually take them to visit uh, companies and see how what they're studying in the boot camps is being applied. And so uh, we took these girls to a company, a telecom company called Airtel, and then uh, it was evident that they even uh, started asking us, telling us they are seeing that there are very few women in these companies working. And so one of the things we, we do is, you know, uh, try to push them to get internships, try to push them to apply for opportunities with the companies, but also show them that they can become a certain uh, career, especially these careers that are male dominated in Tanzania. It's, it's, it's important that we show them that they can take up these jobs because then they begin studying towards these careers. Um, and so uh, some of the initiatives that we want to implement here, uh, internship programs, uh, pl internship placements where they can go and uh, work in companies, but also uh, get programs in place to get girls into these companies to work and take up some of these jobs. Already we are having girls who, are partic who started participating in our first bootcamp. They are already working in some companies uh, that we know. And these companies tell us, hey, yeah, we have two girls who are, who, who are who, uh, participating in your program and they're doing really good because they are competent with using uh, technology, laptops and working with Excel. And it's, it's really helpful. The other focus that we do, and these ones are usually for the university students and those uh, older ones who are already starting to think about entrepreneurship, trying to think about uh, implementing their ideas, is supporting. So the other focus is we support, uh, we support them uh, with ideation, we support them um, with incubation, we support them with uh, technical tools and knowledge, and with this. Uh, we usually conduct trainings with the universities and then listen to what their ideas are, uh, help them shape these ideas more, but also we help them now implement these ideas so, such that they are feasible for the Tanzanian environment. Uh, we partner with uh, a hub called Buni. Uh, one of the other people we work with, uh, Ajumane, and his uh, company called Sahara Sparks, uh, which is a, a mentorship. Uh, an incubation accelerator. And so through this, we, we are able to help these girls in universities and in institutions that are already thinking about setting up businesses such that we can have uh, many female innovators in, in Tanzania. Because the truth is there are very few. In Tanzania, it's very easy to mention five uh, male uh, contributors or innovators or startup owners. It's very hard to mention five women uh, startup owners in Tanzania. So that's something we are also trying to change. The other thing uh, we've realized that is important uh, to include in our strategy, because we have a, a strategy that goes up to 2021, um, we want, because we've noticed it's really hard 
uh, to do all this grassroots campaign without having a proper long-term plan. And so uh, usually the government uh, implements a lot of policies uh, to in for inclusiveness, for gender equality, uh, but also we want to see that these policies motivate the girls, motivate the boys to participate in STEM uh, and also to, to, be, to be innovative. And so some of the things we do is we invite lots of these government uh, stakeholders to come and see what the girls are doing. Uh, we do write a lot of reports uh, that we share with them uh, just to show them that maybe the education system could happen like this. And so one of the, it's important that in our programs that we, for, to, to us, uh, that we record as much evidence as possible, that showcase uh, as much evidence as possible about uh, the girls' uh, use of STEM and what they can do with STEM. And the feedback so far is really good. Like we're getting lots of traction. We're getting lots of good feedback about uh, the programs we're, run, we're running. And so we hope that uh, through roundtable discussions, through uh, some of these uh, engagements that we have with, with the policymakers, uh, we can begin a discussion around what STEM, uh, what can be done to include women and, and men equally in STEM and technology in Tanzania. So that is, uh, in a nutshell, that is what uh, She for Change is all about. Um, and those who came to Bordeaux, uh, you met Abela and Rose. Uh, they did a really good presentation there about what She for Change does. Um, but all these, so we have a team of six, six women, and we have four, no, three, four, 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 four guys. And so uh, they are also working in different areas to push technology, to push uh, empowerment for women, empowerment for youth. And yeah, so it's, 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 quite, it's quite nice having them on the team, and uh, they really provide lots of insight. Um, we are trying to establish a scratch community uh, in Tanzania. Um, we are engaging ourselves now in translating it and localizing most of the content uh, in Swahili, Swahili uh, such that we can use them uh, to teach you. Yeah. If you have any questions, uh, you're welcome. Okay. Sure, we have a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I Thank you very know. much. Uh, if uh, you uh, finish your computer. Very good presentation. I thank you very much. Yeah. It's very, we learned a lot from it. And yeah. happens that now we have a lot of questions. Thank you. Let's go They're for welcome. the question sections, okay? Yeah. Uh, I wanted to know if you, if in public or private school they are teaching uh, computer science, or from since since uh, which age? So in if you are in, yeah in private schools they are teaching computer science um, and these ones are between the age of eighteen when they are in form two form three that's when they begin ha having these computer classes but it's not all of them um, in in private schools yes it's you might find they are teaching even to the lower kids uh, in private schools. Only the ones that are in the cities get uh, these computer classes. And so one of the learnings that we've got from our girls in ICT uh, is that some of these schools have one computer, which is in the headmaster's room. Uh, most of these private public schools don't have electricity. And so it's hard even to teach uh, for them to have computers there. Um, but uh, one of the initiatives that the government is doing through the Communication Access Fund is to install solar panels and install computer labs in these schools. And so we hope that the situation has changed here. Yeah. Uh, I think most of the mics are muted. <laughs> This is Beatrice. Welcome, Beatrice. Uh, she's Italian. Hello. It's another friend yeah. from LCL from 2013. Yeah. And now she's living in Sweden too. 
So welcome, Beatrice. So uh, actually, Adele, uh, to add on to that question, one of the things we are doing, um, so f actually after Bodu, uh, we met with uh, uh, the Pocket Code team. And so uh, we've, we've, with our team here, we've translated already the whole Pocket, pocket Code platform to Swahili. And so from that, we are hoping to begin teaching, uh, even in public schools and centers where there are no computers, but using smartphones, and using tablets. So we want to equip our trainers with these teams and then they can go to the center uh, with charged tablets, teach them how to code on the tablets and then they come back. And so we hope, because we, we, we think the situation is not gonna change anytime soon. So, but we wanna catch, um, we wanna catch the girls before they grow old. And I want to know about the program of She Codes for Change, the program uh, about your boot camps about yeah. uh, App Adventure. Uh, I know a little about it, so can you tell the others about uh, about it? Uh, the, boot, the boot camps, right? Yes, the boot camps. They are super yeah. interesting, and I think yeah. it's nice to share some photos if you have, because I know some of them, so they are really nice. <laughs> yeah, I, I, will, I, will, I think I would I would share, uh, we have a, a, a documentary on YouTube, uh, that uh, we made for the for this year's uh, girls in ICT, and I think it's re it's it's really interesting. I'll share the link here. Um, but so these boot camps, we have we have different uh, types of boot camps. We have the girls in ICT project, uh, which is for secondary public schools, uh, and this one is for girls between uh, sixteen to eighteen. Uh, we sometimes we go as low as thirteen. And the nature of these boot camps is we collect, so we work, we collect girls in a center, and then for three days we teach them uh, mobile application development, depending on the curriculum we choose for a boot camp. So we either teach them mechatronics or we teach them uh, mobile application development or we teach them game development. And we use Scratch, we use MIT App Inventor, uh, but also we are involving a lot of apps. So some of some of the boot camps they do uh, videography and um, storytelling, and for three days uh, we teach them the digital literacy skills, and then, uh, also in the program we end we endeavor to teach them how to be confident, how to express themselves, and so we have those pitching uh, trainings um, and competitions, uh, but then also which which they have to use now uh, to talk about their ideas. Um, but also, uh, the third thing that we usually do is motivation and inspiration. So in these boot camps, we invite women who, have, who are in the tech sector, who have uh, started companies, or who have studied computer science, and they come and talk to these girls. So that is how the nature uh, of the boot camp is. It's usually fun, so we usually take them to the, for those who are out of Dar es Salaam, we take them to the beach, or we take them for a movie, or we take them, uh, to play games somewhere, but also because we use computers, they can play around uh, with the computers. We leave it to them to them to play around, to send emails, to create uh, uh, Facebook pages for themselves, to communicate with uh, with each other, and it's it's usually fun like that. Yeah. Uh, Simon, uh, so yes. if I understand. Uh, you have one center. So uh, for, we don't. Uh, physical currently. center. You have just one, and then you, uh, the children and the, the young people comes to you, or sometimes you go to schools with your team to promote this uh, courses and three days activities. How is that? How do you and how? Uh, do you spread the word? How do people know about you and come to you? How is that? How, the practical thing that is, the, I think, is a very challenging thing to do. Uh, yeah. To so get we, don't, we, don't have our, we don't have our own physical space currently. Uh, that's in our plans. And next year, we're going to embark on a really, uh, that's, that's the hub I talked about that we want to create. 
but usually uh, what we do, for example, in rec for, to recruit uh, girls, uh, one of the methods that we do, we work with the government. So the government has a section of the, uh, from the prime minister's office called Tamisemi, uh, T-A-M-I-S-E-M-I, and it's responsible for recruiting these people, the girls from secondary school. Uh, so they send us lists of girls and teachers that they, they want to include in, in the program, and then we communicate with them, organize logistics, and bring them to the center that we rent uh, to train them for the, for the boot camps. Uh, some of the other activities, uh, it's girls who have participated in our previous activities who bring their friends. So we will call them, because we usually have a database of the girls who have participated, and we'll call their parents and say, we have this program that is coming up for two weeks. We need your daughter to, to participate. And if not, they usually say, okay, my neighbor's daughter is in holidays and she comes over. So that is the other way that we, 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 we get our girls. But also, uh, our social media is interactive, and most of these girls, they have learned how to use Facebook <laughs> and Instagram. So they will see a poster about an event, and then they will come <laughs> and sign up for the event. Um, also, parents send us messages and say, when is your next uh, bootcamp? Um, and then we tell them, and then they sign up their, 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 their daughters to the bootcamps. Yeah. That's great. And yeah. one more thing. Uh, so you you told me you told about uh, to spark this uh, this interest in this growth and also to sustain the engagement. Yeah. Uh, so for instance, I uh, I'm wondering if uh, people who has already taken this course would come back to help you and you are setting more young people than new ones to help you and so you can grow how how does it work currently currently what we are doing is because most of these girls so they are really they're young you know so some of them uh, once we spark their interest what well, once we've introduced them to scratch once we've introduced them to uh, STEM and the computers and the, and the tools. Um, we usually, we, we usually, they go back uh, to their schools and we tell them start an ICT club. Uh, teach your friends how to uh, use these tools. And so, when whenever we usually go online to track the projects that they've worked on, we see uh, that these girls are actually continuing to work on this. Some of them are continuing to work on these projects. Um, and they usually send us emails and say, we have started a club, we need materials. And so we share uh, some of these learning materials with them. Uh, it's been a challenge uh, because so far we, we, we haven't secured enough funding to be able to track and monitor such, such clubs. Uh, but we want, we want to make sure that this happens, uh, that whenever they go uh, back to their school, because when they go back, they have to finish their Form 3, they have to go to Form 4. Uh, and then, then, and then they will change the school and go to a, a high level. So we want during this time that they're there in their schools to be able to to, uh, to participate in this in, in in setting up clubs at their schools. Uh, but also in sustaining their participation, uh, we are trying as much as possible to localize all content and make it easy for them to access. Um, one of the things we are doing is so currently we are creating a new website that will have e-learning platform on it, uh, such that once they leave the, the club, so in the, in, in the effort to sustain it, they can go back and participate in this, in, in, in this learning materials online. Yeah. Um, and maybe download a few of these things such that they can be able to continue learning as in, the, in their areas. Yeah. Oh, that's great. And one more question. <laughs> you talk about STEM, not STEAM. You put the A for art. You mentioned about yeah. uh, Susan Ettenheim, the broadery things, stuff. But what more do you do? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I think I, I, art is so important and you get attracted people and sustain that. Uh, it's a I, I think it's so important for a whole person to develop uh, this stuff too. So yeah, you are. Uh, so 
IT guys. So, so what do you do without <laughs> IT? That's the, the question. Uh, sorry, I will answer. I will answer uh, her. Yeah. I know what you are doing. You, you can talk about your entrepreneurship program uh, with App Inventor because you are not teaching only uh, coding, but also you are teaching entrepreneurship, right? To the girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So can you uh, tell us more about this. That's true. So, uh, for example, one of the uh, things uh, we do please, in the please, please, a little slower because a lot okay. of echo is cutting you, so we lost. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So, uh, one of the activities we do uh, is like Adele mentioned, we do teach them entrepreneurship. Is that slow enough? <laughs> so, uh, we teach them how to create businesses uh, on paper. So we teach them how to create uh, ideas um, out of their community. So uh, whenever they have, usually the first thing we do before we teach them how to use MIT App Inventor, before we teach them how to use Scratch, is we help them formulate ideas. We teach them how these ideas can impact the community. Uh, and most of these ideas, we, whenever we create them, it's without tech. So we'd look at problems in their societies, for example, an education problem, and then we'd show them how uh, they can innovate and create a solution that is not tech, but a solution that will solve that particular problem. And so uh, during this ideation phase, we teach them how maybe they could make money out of it, maybe how they could create a lot of impact and change lives in their society. Um, that is what we do during the entrepreneurship uh, course. And it's, it's really diverse, I've really just tried to narrow it down. Um, but also without take, uh, one of the things we do uh, is uh, storytelling. Uh, so they write scripts, uh, they write uh, storyboards uh, with characters. So we play a lot with Lego, uh, Legos, um, and then they can narrate the story with the voice. Um, so uh, also we are trying to create a comic, a comic book uh, that they can use. Uh, bringing these stories to life, that's when we involve tech. Uh, so there are some videos I will share also about from, from the girls in one of the programs we did, uh, that they, after writing the scripts, after writing uh, all the storyboards and drawing all the, the characters, they went ahead and used uh, smartphones and then recorded using still photography uh, these pictures of the moving uh, Legos and then they created stories out of it, which is really interesting and they loved it. And so we want to do it again and again. Um, also, uh, the other thing we do without tech uh, is we I'll have a lot of, uh, because we one of the, the core of our program is to teach girls how to be confident and how to express themselves. So uh, when we are not coding, when we are not uh, animating uh, things on the computer and on, on the phone, uh, we are teaching them how to speak, how to be audible, how to speak clearly, how to be confident um, whenever they are expressing themselves. But also uh, we teach them how to, how to be uh, girls who are empowered, how to be girls who are go-getters and always looking for the next big thing, always looking for the next knowledge, yeah. That's wonderful. I think it's so important. <laughs> Very good. Very, yeah. Um, we, we think one, 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 one of the things that we see uh, in our programs is the girls come when they're really shy, uh, when they don't want to speak, when they, they're afraid to touch the computer, when they are not talking about what they're feeling. But usually after, they are so vocal, they are so serious when they're talking. It's really, really good, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Uh, and and Robert, would you like to, to make some questions, Beatrice? Yes, I, I, I have a question. Yes. I'm very impressed of your presentation. But the, uh, Thank you. I have very low knowledge about 
Tanzania. Is it a big country? Many people living there? Yes, Tanzania is a huge country. Um, so I can Google the population here because I don't know it in my head. Um, <laughs> but in East Africa, we are the, the biggest country in East Africa, and I think somewhat like the second, no, if not the third largest uh, in Africa, if you check on the map. Uh, so, like, we have a population of around 50, 50, 50, 60 million, I think it's coming close to uh, 60 million now. Um, mm. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's a really big country. Uh, we have, you've heard of Kilimanjaro Mountain? Yes. Yes, the college, so it's in Tanzania. Uh, we have the ocean. Uh, our biggest uh, economic product is agricultural products. Um, we have so much, uh, we have a, a mineral called Tanzanite in Tanzania, which is a really, really rare mineral, which is only found in Tanzania. Um, but just to speak about, we are still, we are still, we are, we are, we are, we are still a growing uh, country. And some, so because we are growing, you find some areas, things like electricity are not everywhere, uh, paved roads, some places are still, with that roads, um, internet internet is really fast in the capital city and it's affordable in the capital city, but it's not spread out everywhere. Um, but also, we still have cultures that are I haven't moved on to adopt the modern way of living. Uh, so some cultural practices practices such as early marriage, uh, FGM, female, female genital mutilation. Um, also, like uh, albin albinism and discrimination of uh, disabled people, we have cultures that are still practicing some of these cultures that are affecting a lot of uh, girls and children here. Yeah. And uh, how how did you found this uh, she codes for change? Is it the government is founding this, or is it the private uh, companies founding? Uh, it is it is a privately founded uh, company. Um, so one of our founders called Abela Bateyunga was a Yali fellow, uh, the uh, American Initiative for for developing young leaders. And after that, she went and interned at Microsoft in Nairobi. Um, and there's a, an interesting blog about uh, her starting uh, she could she could change i'll share it later um but through that because she she she's so big when it comes to youth empowerment and uh engagement of youth uh in the governance and economic uh, agendas of tanzania and so she founded she could for change started as a project as one of the pilot projects uh for uh, her ngo uh to to engage youth in, in STEM and especially girls. Uh, but after the first year in 2015, after, 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 after that, after the first project, it became evident that this should be scaled up. And so now we're in the phase of scaling uh, Chief of Change. I joined in December last year. Um, uh, and now it, I'm, I'm almost uh, making a year now. And so uh, my activities involve around creating ne uh, networks and partnerships, uh, programming for the uh, uh, creating programs for the for the for the uh, company, uh, but also leading the team and um, just making sure everything is running and the beneficiaries are benefiting from it. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. It's so nice to meet you all. Actually, uh, with Heloisa. Uh, next year, uh, we want to implement uh, a project for, girl, for girls with disabilities in, in schools here. And so I reached out to Eloisa to find out uh, details about what she's doing there using Scratch and technology uh, and some of the methods she's using. And so that is another niche that we want to, because we've done a lot of uh, projects where girls come to our centers, we bring girls, but we haven't really explored the possibility of helping girls who have been traumatized, girls who are either, who have come from this uh, really uh, tough background or who cannot speak or who are, mentally, who are 
mentally uh, disabled. So we want to use, uh, we have a project that is coming up for, for that also. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone wants to do some question? Do you have any questions? Robert, you can write if you can. You can't. If you can't speak, you can write the question in the chat, please. Yeah. <laughs> Feel free. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, my question is um, Do you accept also uh, young uh, girls, like volunteers from other countries, to help you in Tanzania? Like from Europe, for example. Very good. We haven't we haven't started accepting volunteers, uh, but uh, with our project, we want to begin inviting. Uh, so currently, the volunteers we are using are local volunteers uh, because they are here, they are available. Uh, but we are open. Actually, that's one of the things why I'm really excited about uh, meeting you guys. Uh, is I want we, we want to see how. Uh, people from other countries, you know, from your country, from Europe, uh, that have used these tools and they're working there, how we can work together to push, uh, to see how we can uh, amplify our activities in Tanzania. So, uh, we are open to receive, if you have any volunteers in mind who can come and spend time with us, uh, creating systems, developing curriculum, uh, but also when it comes to training. Uh, the, the only the only thing is that most of the girls that we train, um, language is one of the things that we look uh, towards whenever we are delivering our training. So Kiswahili uh, is easier. So the, the trainers need to be able to mix where possible. Uh, but English, most of the girls know English uh, in the advanced uh, in the advanced levels. Yeah. You're welcome. Nice job. I love what you are doing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and also for you, like, so IoT is something we really want to do. And I'm sure you, you, you've been told, uh, Adele, uh, but uh, the, in, the ITU, uh, the Telecommunication Union for uh, the UN, and us are uh, drafting a coding camp, African gas coding camp uh, for next year. And so we are going to be looking for scratchers, we're going to be looking for trainers uh, from Africa, but also from the network uh, to create uh, this coding camp, to train at this coding camp, uh, but also in Tanzania. So uh, things like about IoT, we want to implement IoT in Tanzania. So, um, any support, any uh, material you have that we can do, any projects that you think are working, for example, in Tunisia, uh, we can get it and then replicate it here easily. Uh, I will uh, talk maybe a little bit about uh, how we, uh, we are teaching I IoT and why. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people around the world, they use Arduino uh, to teach uh, robotics and uh, embedded system. Uh, the problem with the regular uh, Arduino Uno is uh, that you don't have uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, there is another board called uh, ESP8266. It's like an Arduino. You can do the same project with an Arduino, but with Wi-Fi. When you start this uh, doing things with Wi-Fi, it means that you can connect objects uh, together. Uh, for example, different sensors, motors, they can connect together. They can decide together. So you don't have uh, only one prog program. You have a lot of program, a lot of words uh, to, to program. The other interesting things about uh, teaching this to kids is that you teach electronics. So with this uh, board, you teach networking because they need to know to have some basics of uh, networking. For this, yeah. you can teach them how to to, uh, to, to uh, web programming uh, because yeah. they can make their own 
uh, web interface embedded web uh, server uh, they will teach uh, they will learn also how web services uh, works uh, together we work also with some specific protocols so it's really um, uh, when you we speak about stem uh, you you see really stem into iot you, yeah. you 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 will mix all programming uh, electronics uh, you can have some some mechanics web services all this uh, all these things in the same uh, project so that's why uh, i love uh, teaching uh, iot and i think it's really worth uh, for us to, to not uh, separate any more electronics and mechanics and programming. I think that from the beginning of uh, when we start teaching kids, they should uh, like learn everything all together and not be uh, intimidated uh, with uh, this uh, technology. Thank you so much. And we look forward to actually starting to teach IoT in Tanzania too. Yeah. Any questions? Beatrice, um, do you want to make any questions? Do you have any questions to make? We can't hear you. Okay. Can you hear me, Eloisa? No. Yes. It was now we can hear you. Okay. Okay. I think uh, I is answered uh, before. I I asked if uh, Simon, hi, are you in networking with uh, Kenya? Yes. So yeah. we met we met Max uh, at Bodu. Not um, I know. I know Fred Sagwe. No, uh, the only person uh, we are con in contact with from Kenya is Max uh, from the uh, United States University. Uh, and we are thinking of working together on some of these uh, projects. Um, we are going to work together on the Tato Stitch project that we're going to pilot here. Uh, he's also going to be piloting it in Kenya, hopefully soon. Um, that's the only network. Do you have any networks in Kenya that you think we can uh, collaborate with? Uh, it seems that Kenya also is very uh, is a, a country that is moving a lot about coding. Is it, isn't it? That is true. That is true. Kenya in East Africa, Kenya is like the the hotbed where technology adoption is really high. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Maybe I have a question for the group. Um, so I, I'm, I'm really excited uh, to be part of this group and be peers. I just wanted to understand how uh, some, of the, some of the initiatives that uh, we push in the group, some of the collaborations that we uh, in here we share and help each other in, uh, initiate and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, Simon, uh, all of us, um, I think we are uh, applied for, maybe you, you told about that, uh, we are applied for a LCL course, Learning Creative yeah. Learning. Are you, are you applied to no. the course? The new? No, I haven't. I think I should apply for it. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, eight, 18, yeah. Uh, 18 October. October. Yeah. Okay. It's a good, a good way. I hope they have a, a big uh, group where they can, uh, a bigger group when, where we can discuss. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you to be present. It was really interesting. Always nice to hear your experience and see photos and discover what the other people are doing around the world. So it's really interesting. Thank you. I'm excited.
So we are about finishing our session. Uh, I like very much your presentation. Congratulations. Thank it's you. a very good beginning in yeah. our group. We learned a lot from you. Um, so uh, maybe in this final part, we can talk about some practical, practical stuff. Uh, this group, uh, many of us uh, were met, as I told before, and Beatrice told us. We are peers from the first learning, creative learning from 2013. Many of us are in touch, in informal touch, since then, four years now. Uh, most of these people I know personally or have interacting for intensive for this time. So it's very brilliant people. It was a very passionate people, each one in his own country. And so this is a very special group because of passionate people. It's not uh because this first two uh, l cell course had ten thousand appliances all the world so and then we it was narrowed 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 and since the beginning of this war this year we decided to organize this session to keep the people not only me with in touch but everybody in touch you know to put everybody together, this wonderful, very special people. And so each one can know each other and interact by themselves. For example, I needed something about Arduino. I can't help you with Arduino, not at all. But I'm there with other people. So everybody can share and meet each other. This is the idea. And for, we are in the first semester, we had weekly sessions. Of course, uh, nobody can do it, make it every week. Everybody's very um, busy. But no, no problem. We still are in touch. We still are peers and friends. So uh, we are now trying to set these technical problems because we do not have a a uh, good platform yet, we are looking for it. And since we are, we are brilliant people and IT persons, I think we together can make it work. No, no matter what problems we have, and no matter what we face to struggling with, uh, we are still together and we are growing and strengthening these relationships. So we have much, much, much things to learn. Eloisa. Um, okay. Eloisa. Say. Simon, I think I had a problem with the connection. Yes, but I think he's hearing me. Ah, he okay. Hear. Okay. He's just not. Uh... So. Uh, that's it. So for the next two sessions, we would like to have some more presentations. Uh, it's not only presentations, you know, it's not a formal presentation, but just introducing yourself, talking about what you do, your experience, your expertise, your country, your challenges. Just like that, just as a very informal, easygoing uh, presentation. So now we are organizing this schedule for the next presentations. And please uh, stay with us and please volunteer for these presentations to inspire others, to share with others uh, as much as you can. Uh, that's the idea. Thank you, Eloisa, for all this effort. It's really nice. Thank you, Eloisa. Uh, thanks for all.
<laughs> I, I think I think they um, will go to make a LCL group in Facebook. Uh, the, the, the MIT, the MIT group will make a, a, a Facebook group. Maybe we can share our uh, meeting in this group as well. If you want, uh, Luisa. We can discuss it later. It's good to know. Thank you. Thank you, Luisa. Thank you for all. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. See you later. Bye. Bye. Bye, Adele. Bye, Roberto e Luisa. Thank you. Baci per i bambini.